Hey guys and welcome to another Valheim episode. We just tackled the swarm boss in the previous episode which I really really enjoyed and this time it's a journey of setting sail. We had to find the new dragon boss and we had to craft all our gear to be prepared for it. So we began by me and a friend uh, sailing out on a tiny little boat throughout the night um, just trying to search for new lands, new locations where this dragon boss could be. We definitely should have taken the bigger boat, but we figured, oh, it's just a small trip, we'll go in the small boat. It ended up being a voyage of discovery across the entire map. You can see we were wading further and further in, out into the ocean. And we circled this whole map and we occasionally stopped off for these kind of barnacles which we discovered. These are like these mineable abyssal barnacles and once you collect them and begin to mine on them, the creature that they rest on will begin to shake and awake and you need to get off it before it ultimately sinks you. Uh, they will give you some materials that allow you to craft some basic sort of harpoons and stuff for fishing and other gear and um, we sailed through meadows plains we even found mist land at one point and this time we decided to take the long boat because we had been traveling for so long and we hadn't found anything of note that we were like right let's get the bigger boat out let's sail faster let's cover more land we were testing out the new equipment we'd built as well this was kind of bad um, but I did drag a grey dwarf right into the centre of the ocean and dropped him off because you know when you're just trying to farm wood and you're just trying to get a little temporary base up and they will not leave you alone? Well, I thought I would teach him a lesson and drag him out into the middle of the ocean and drop him off and on reflection, this is this is pretty cruel. I, you know, I apologise to this grey dwarf. I think he found his way home. Um, now, pulling up on some of the lands, we had just a, a little bit more survivability to tackle some of these planes, but it was still difficult. These one-star little gremlins that would run at you would pretty much one-shot you. You also had death skeetos, and we decided that we probably weren't still quite ready for the planes, so we headed back out on the ship. Um, for more sort of sailing, we encountered another serpent, and we were trying to, I was trying to harpoon it and keep it still, so uh, the crewmen could land a ton of arrows on it. Um, eventually, what ended up happening was the boats we were sailing on and the journeys we were taking were getting battered. And we were pulling up and having to make these temporary workplaces just so we could uh, repair and survive and then get moving again. Um, so it was pretty fun because obviously you've, we've been trapped on this small island this whole time on the game and we've only ventured out for what we need but this time we tried to do some real exploring and escape. We even discovered Mistlands which is a new biome which hasn't really been created. It has sort of big cobwebs, large trees and this seems to be probably what is going to be the next update to the game. Um, again the game just looks great, you turn the hood off, you go sailing through the plains and eventually what we decided to do was we headed back into land because we didn't really discover anything. We discovered a lot of locations but nothing too crazy. So we set up this temporary sort of base alongside a mountain. We sort of forged as a group a way up the side of the mountain to remain uh, to farm the remainder of the silver. And um, you can see we had these pits along the way. Um, and yeah, the job was to farm the remainder of the silver using like the wishbones and the axes that we'd made. And that would hopefully then give us the equipment um, that we needed to survive. Up here was sort of our first encounter with stone golems. And um, these take a ton of work to actually kill. And they really do one shot you, so you have to be very careful. So after we'd mined a lot of silver, we got our gears upgraded, we got our wolf capes, um, we, we had all of this stuff which meant we could survive much, much longer into the sort of mining process. Um, so what we did was I headed up onto the mountain, um, defending against dragons with my big steel shield. Um, and I, at this point, I didn't have, I think it was an iron pickaxe. I had, we hadn't crafted one fully. Um, so I was protecting Logic here, who was crafting uh, and mining all of this equipment. And yeah, I would then run it down the mountain and take all of the silver to the main base. It was a really, really fun experience. I think that's what's great about this game, is it's just been really nice just to like, be like, yo, this is what we're doing tonight. Um, as you can see, inside of the port, we've got potions. We've got our, a full reinforced chest full of food. We've got the sausages, which we learned how to make. Um, we've got the nice fire in the cauldron to make, like, soups. Um, 
and this just allows you to survive longer and longer into the woods and into the night and the 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 whole mountain range and through by some miracle i don't know i managed to escape these these two wolves um maybe it was the bone mass buff or the who knows what was helping me here but i just about managed to survive these two wolves so after being up at the top of the mountain and mining obsidian and silver. So after crafting a ton of obsidian arrows, we got back in the boat and we set sail. We eventually discovered something new and inside this dark, wet, windy, mystical land was actually the trader. You can see the big halo bubble where he's protected. He even has a tamed lock next to him. Inside was a little trader quite literally a small trader that sold a variety of things he sold a fishing rod um, a belt that gave you much more weight capacity which made mining and carrying all the heavy steel and iron back so much easier and he also had um, a helmet that illuminated a small area in front and what you would do is you take all the the gold and the, the rubies that you'd been collecting along the way you could trade them to him so equipping the belt this let us again feel much stronger and you could carry a ton more weight that was really really a big improvement and obviously we took the fishing rod for a spin here and it even has its own little mechanics you launch it out into the sea and if there's a little blip in the ocean when it grabs on you then right click and you hook the fish towards you and yeah this game's got loads of little fun relaxing things to do and i've just really enjoyed playing it so we decided to leave the trader island and head back to sort of civilization. After more time sailing, we actually discovered a really big island with a mountain range, and on the top of this mountain, after following the clues, was the boss. Finally, we'd found the location for the boss, and this was the dragon boss, which had three slots on its summoning altar, and a dragon egg was nearby. We had already collected two dragon eggs from our journeys and we knew that this was what we needed to do. We needed to go farm more wood, farm more obsidian, get a ton of obsidian arrows, get ready for the dragon fight and you would place the three dragon eggs onto the altar to summon it up. So what we ended up doing was before we committed to killing this dragon, we decided that we would farm pretty much all of the iron in the all of the locations that we'd just been to visit so throughout our traveling we'd seen tons of lands tons of swamps and we decided to have a gander and look around at these swamps farming some gook as well to upgrade our say new poison bows which we'd managed to find with the silver and the iron and we headed into this particular swamp that had like 13 crypts and we basically spent a few days mining out these 13 crypts to its complete completion which took ages you know getting every single corner carrying every single tiny bit out of this and we were like once we've mined all of these crypts we won't need any iron ever again many many a nights mining all of this iron and as you can see the little light i've got is from the circlet that the trader gives you and this just lets you mine a little bit more comfortably into the dark um as obviously you have a portable light along the way we had to play a little platformer game to farm the gook which is like build a precarious amount of ladders that somehow fit together and allow you to farm the gook to get your green banners and upgrade your poison bow so what we decided to do was we took two boats decided okay let's sail the boats across and be ready to pick up all of the iron that we've just farmed just to break up the pattern of play we would return back to the top of the mountain farm some more silver um farm some more dragonite or should i say dragonite what am i talking about i've completely forgotten the word somebody will remind me obsidian um, and again, yeah, just farming and farming and farming. And it was all about setup because we wanted to finally actually have a bit of a base that was sustainable, that had a ton of food, a ton of equipment. And that if you wanted to go do an adventure, you didn't have to go mine. You could just go into the deposits and pick up a load of stuff. Moving all of the silver and the obsidian and the wolf's trophies in the wolf skins that we found back and forth, cooking all of the things that you'd collected on the way. This serpent was cooked down into a big serpent stew, which gives you a ton of stamina and health. Um, also we were ready to rest up and generally what we then did we moved all of the iron back across and i decided to get on the boat and do a movie like jump across and the boats were going too fast and i hadn't eaten 
and I was cold and I had no stamina and I actually drowned. So note to self, don't do a Tom Cruise Mission Impossible action jump across two moving longboats, you will die. So after resting up and eating, we were ready to then go and tackle this boss. We had the three dragon eggs, we had all of the armor and all of the iron we needed. If you want to know how much iron we farmed, it was two complete longship boats full, which I think was close to a thousand iron. So yeah, we mined a lot of iron. And then what we do now is we go into the dragon boss and we summon it. And this fight was so cool that I'll probably let it run a little bit longer than I probably should do for entertainment. But the actual fight itself, mechanically, wasn't that interesting. But the point of this game is all of the process to building up. So these structures here, that we, we've also built these. We built walls of fire and little objects that we can hide behind and climb on top. Because we knew probably the dragon would be up in the air. It would be an aerial fight and it would rain down on us. So just the whole journey to fighting this monster and then you raise it and all of the skies go pink and orange and it's shooting down this blue fiery mist it just looked awesome and although the fight wasn't that mechanically interesting it basically just stayed up in the air it had damage reduction against the obsidian and against the arrow so you couldn't just rail it down but um once it would land if you were able to beat it with like blunt weapons and melee weapons it would take a lot of damage so we kind of kept it at range just shooting away and when it landed um, people would take turns to getting close and melee it but you can just see the orange skies the fiery bows and the way the, the, the just the whole scene of the game like this is a a pixel style game it's a 500 megabyte game like 500 megabytes and it has all of this in it and again, yeah, the, the fight's not that incredible, but the journey to it, finding the island, finding the mountains, farming all of the, the iron, moving it from place to place, resting up, fighting all across different islands, mist lands, plains, and all of this stuff. It just was such a cool journey to go from, like, you. Uh, the last fight was we were just kind of some dudes with clubs, um killing this swamp boss and now we have like a whole system we have a portal system we have a full-on full upgraded set of poison bows all of the iron we could need all of the sort of obsidian we need and eventually the dragon went down and it dropped its tears and its trophy and these tears allowed you to unlock more modern equipment such as spinning wheels for yarn it lets you get windmills and all of this stuff. <clears throat> so it was really, really, I don't know, it was really fun to go from like the start of the game where you just trapped on this little island to sailing around searching for it. And yeah, um, I just thought it was a really cool journey going from start to finish. Yeah, Blast Furnace, all of these things you can upgrade. And hopefully that gave you a little insight of what it took us to kill the dragon boss. Um, and we'll see you in the final boss. We actually went and got its power. And its power was that it allows you to always sail with the wind, which is pretty cool. So, as always, if you enjoyed that and you want to see the next and final episode, leave a like, leave a comment. Um, I've really enjoyed the game um, and really enjoyed making these videos and documenting the process. Um, really, really relaxing game. Um, so thanks very much for tuning in again if you want to support the page more directly there is an option to hit the join button for as little as $1.99 and support the content that way you get exclusive videos badges and I always respond to members so thanks very much